don't. Don't open that box. What have you done? You shouldn't have opened it. You shouldn't have opened it. Open it. Open it. Open it. Hello, listening people. Hello! You're listening to Spit and Polish Presents The Mystery Box. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Sawinski. And I'm the mysterious Bartek. Hello, the mysterious Bartek. Why are you so mysterious? I hide in the box and people have to open it to see what's in there. Um, are you the voice that says, don't open the box? I thought that was you. Maybe. I'm warning the audience not to open the episode. Close Although the, the this voice... episode now because we are going to be talking about some mysterious piece of media that we had to watch. The voice, has a, the voice has a bit of a like American inflection though, so it might uh, be... maybe it's not me. So, but... like, say box, box. <laughs> <laughs> so we are spitting Polish, likingly because we are always spitting, and we both happen to be Polish. Is that not correct, Bartek? I've checked. Yep. It is... No, you're Polish. <laughs> you're, you're not Czech. You're Polish. Oh, you, we have to check. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> Do you, I you, get it now. You kind of went through multiple <laughs> answers then. <laughs> oh, God. No, I just meant I checked. Like, yes, we are in fact. <laughs> but I, I didn't mean the country check. Yeah. Oh, well. So we are doing the show, The Mystery Box, in which we had to watch a, a, a DVD, a video project and or film that was completely a mystery to us. Often these are found secondhand. Op, op shops, cash converters. One time I got one from a post office. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have a guest randomly select them. The, the the thing that we have to watch. We watch it as a group together, having not seen it before, and we talk about it to you, the listening people. It, it, really, sound, report. it really sounded like you were going to say randomly selected guest. <laughs> no, so we just um, had to watch a, a, a random movie and or a video project or thing. Yeah. You see, Ryan, I like that usually our go-to word for it is film, and I have to like sometimes remind you, well, they're technically DVDs we don't know, but earlier you said video project or film. I like <laughs> that you said video project first this time. <laughs> for this episode, we do have a guest. Sometimes we don't have a guest, mm-hmm. only once on this show. Yep, and I had to pick it. Uh, the guest? I had to pick the film that episode. Oh, yeah, that episode, yes. yes. So, me but, or Could you... I pick you to tell the audience, the listening people, who the guest is for this episode. Well, I pick the listening people to listen to me. Our guest this episode is the lovely Lauren Tice. Hi. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> How are you? Good, good, good. You sound great because you... <laughs> well, three goods is great. <laughs> because you help pick out randomly from the box. You came to my. You came to my place. You're like... Walked in, you here before Bartek, you, you, you rubbed your hands and said, so is Bartek bringing these movies? And I said, no, they're right here, right in front of you. And you kind of look down, there's all the DVDs there with the spines facing the opposite way, so you can't tell which one it is. And you were like, I'm going to pick now. I'm like, no, you got to wait for Bartek to arrive. I was, I was very impatient. I was like, I was like, I it's, it's exciting. Now. It's a mystery yeah. box. And yeah. that patience eventually did pay off because you chose... Finding Emo or Emo. Yeah. It depends which pronunciation the movie video project decides. But let's be honest, when you. <laughs> not to get into the history, but we've. No- Ryan and I have known this title for a while. And obviously we had our go to pronunciation, pronunciation of it. Emo. <laughs> yeah, Emo. <laughs> when I first arrived at Emo, this was the heart of the village. Finding Emo, and I will 100% guarantee that none of you at home have heard of this. I bet no one has this other than me. To be fair, Ryan, you said (laughs) no one has heard of this. I definitely have had 
like back in the day when emails were new, like people would send like funny images and emails like, oh, check out this. And Finding Emo would be like one of the joke, like, oh, here's the Nemo character, but with like black hair. Well, that's what we're <laughs> going to, that's what we have to get I'll, into. I'll send, we have I'll to look- get into our understanding of what we thought we were going to get. And that kind of delves into the cover of this uh, DVD. And yeah. I must tell you first, I'm the one who found this DVD at a, 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 a St. Vinny's. And I have quite a history of this. This I've owned for two weeks now. Um, I, yeah, it got picked very quickly. I bought it with uh, a couple of other things. None of uh, Only one other thing for the mystery box, just other things for my own amusement. And I bought this. I walked up. I put it on the counter. The older woman that, you know, those old women that work at op shops, you know, the ones. My, wanna... my grandma's one. So just watch what you say. So here. it might be her. So Lauren's grandma <laughs> grabbed the DVDs and went, oh, yeah, this is a good movie. And, oh, okay, someone's finally buying this. And then she grabbed this one, Finding Emo, and we just went, <laughs> Finding Emo. Uh, finally, and put it down. <laughs> and I bought it. And it just makes me go, how long's it been there? How long has it been there? I hope it's been there as long as it went when it got first released. So, <laughs> why did I get this one? Well, gee, why? The cover's pretty impressive. Lauren, I want to give you the... the monumental task of, of trying to describing cover. the cover to this DVD. Um, I know it's a bit... It's very difficult this week. It's so difficult. So it just has be okay. What looks like mountains on it, pitch black. The mountains are like at, in, at night. Yes, at night with a green ominous circle, like moonlight shining through. Ooh. With some rays coming down onto the tussle. Is it a pleasant green? Is it like nature? No, it's nature? an off, off alien green. Oh, so it might be an alien movie. Yes. Hmm. And the light beams come down to the title. Very plainly looks like like um, a Word document font. Times New Roman, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Finding Emo or Emo. Emo. However you like to pronounce it. So we've uh, made it into Emo Village again and been welcomed by the beautiful people of Emo. And, and what colour font is that in? White. Ooh, so it just kind of bounces yes. off the, the well, black. White off yes. black, yeah. White Not, off black. It could have been written in green, the same kind it, of green, it is, but it's, it's, a, it's a... It's very small font, yeah. It is such a simple cover. Hmm. And I saw it, and my immediate thought was, ooh, ominous. Edgy, too. Maybe. I thought ominous. Hmm. This gave it ew, kind of like permeates an ominous tone to it. Yeah, this isn't like, you know, young Australians on a trip or anything. And I knew I was up for a good time when I opened the DVD up in the store and I removed the disc and saw that it's a DVR, a disc mm. that you can buy and burn DVD, like burn as DVDs with the with the purple background on it. So mm. I knew this is homemade and I thought, yes. Well, right, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but in the credits, they clearly went to a studio. And then on the back... I do love the fact that it did have a synopsis, but that really confused us even more. Yeah. Because the synopsis basically just tells you it's about how, like, 19 Australians set out expecting to find something in Papua New Guinea, and they found something that changed their lives forever and left them with even more questions. Who is my neighbour? Which is still a question I ask. (laughs) And then here's where it got me. It has a cast list. Yeah. And I said, cast? Yeah. Oh, this must be a movie. And then I looked down and it said 60 minutes running time. And I went, ooh, mm-hmm. must be like a short movie. What were our expectations of this? When I, when, when I gra- when it was grabbed out and we were like, yeah, finding, finding emo. What was our thoughts? Well, we both, first of all, had a bit of a giggle. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, this could be a horror film. Like a really bad, horrible, like... B grade horror film, like like with monsters or what, like a or like I don't Blair know, Witch kind of horror or, film, or like Ginger Spice. Was it that one that we Ginger watched? Snaps? Ginger Snaps. My yes. favorite horror movie, Ginger that we had to Spice, watch at the university. scariest Spice Girl. Yes, the one we had to watch at university. And I would have look, it, look. It. If 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 I stuck this in and it turned out to be Ginger Snaps, I would have been real fucking happy. Not saying that this movie didn't make me happy. <laughs> 
I'll get into that. Was there any part where you weren't smiling? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. I'll get it. We'll get into it. So, Lauren, you thought it was going to be a horror movie, a kind of like yeah, scary, just, yeah, spooky. Some, yeah, yeah. No. I, 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 um, initially when I saw it, when I saw the cover, just looked at the cover, I went, "Oh, this might be like a Blair Witch kind of movie where they're in the woods." With a camera, maybe there's aliens because of this beaming green neon disgusting light coming out of the mountaintops. Yeah. And the mountains on the cover is just black silhouette. It's like they're just drawn. They're not actual mountains. But uh and finding emo, I was like, ooh, maybe this is about someone who got lost in the woods and that was finding emo. them. Yeah. And mm. I thought, interesting. But then I read the back and I went, Oh, it must be a documentary. And then I read Cast List and I went, Oh, I guess it mustn't be a documentary. Well, Maybe it's hmm. still a horror movie but presented like fa- as a documentary. Well, yeah, like the found footage films are basically like fake documentaries in a way. Yeah, oh, they, yeah, they are. Yeah, found yeah. Found footage, yeah. Yeah, found footage. What about you, Bartek? Well, definitely before I read the back, you know, it's it says Finding Emo and... Not, not, neither of you mentioned it, but did you really not think Finding Nemo at all? <laughs> 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 Initially, yes, but then I saw it and went... No, this must be something else. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I never thought it. I, de- would, look, I never thought it would relate anything to Finding oh, Nemo. Oh no, no, me neither. I did not think it was going to be like a Finding Nemo parody. The, <laughs> the, close, the closest we get is there's Australians involved. Basically, I looked at that and I thought like, oh, it's it's bringing about like a childhood title, but it's obviously very dark. So I thought it was going to be some sort of like edgy story or something like that, yeah. like dark and edgy. I didn't necessarily think it would like be like someone discovering that they. Be- they belong in the emo culture. Maybe, maybe <laughs> something like that. I, I, I definitely didn't think it would it was going to be like urban or suburban setting or anything like that because there there is clearly like mountaintops or at least trees. There, there's definitely some like rural kind of thing out there. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that whatever it was going to be, it was going to be dark and might think it would just be like full of itself, edgy or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Um, but then we read the back and yeah, it sounded like it could have been like a documentary, a fake documentary. And it did say like, oh, it's gonna, we're gonna, they found something. So I was like, okay, either it's going to be like a documentary or it's going to be like, that's a plot. There's a plot here. Yes. It's scripted or something like that. And yes. yeah, you did say that there is a cast list and... Yeah, cast. It says cast. Oh, it actually literally says cast. Keyword, that's that's cast. a key word because I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought it. Uh, that's yeah, what fuck made what me I think, was going to say. I didn't know it actually think, said cast. I thought, oh, maybe not a documentary because it says cast. Yeah, you because a cast a implies that you've been casted. Not- so one thing I do want to point out was, uh, this is a simple thing, on a DVD cover, on the spine, you usually don't have the name of your movie upside down. Uh, oh, yeah, you yeah. usually <laughs> have it the correct way up. So when I put the DVD down, the back of the DVD is on the table. And when I look at the side, it should be written Finding Emo in the way that I can read it. But yeah. I have to flip it the other way around to see it. That's just a tiny thing that I just noticed while we were talking. That's actually, yeah, a good point. But but still, like, the, D- the DVD logo at the bottom is... Is correct. Is correct, yes. So, <laughs> good job, good job. Pezwa films. Yeah, who this I, is I guess. By. I guess this is an edgy thing then. Yeah, there's always a chance of death. I'm wearing my Jesus hat for luck. Before we did start the movie, I did ask this question, like, "Oh, what did you guys think?" And you guys said this, and then I said sarcastically, but with the, sh- I will say, with a shred of honesty, I just went. <sighs> this will just be a film about some Australians being spiritually enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> Was I right? Well, why are you bringing it up now, Ryan, yeah, if you exactly, weren't? Exactly. I guess we'll have to find out in the segment that I have just made up called Trying to Explain This Movie. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Usually on this show, we have only watched what you could consider to be movies, or at least yeah. three-act structured narratives. That's happened, yeah, first nine episodes, this is the tenth one, I think. That's that's yeah. the thing. All of them have been fictional stories with a three-act structure. They have all been fictionalized stories with three-act structures and characters with names that we know. Yeah. You know, they're basic setups. There have been credits. There have been credits. Well, this had credits too. Well, not but ending end, credits, but like other sort of credits. Yeah, exactly. Films. So this is, a, this is not a movie? No. Is it, Lauren? <laughs> no. Well, it's only 60 minutes, right, Ryan? No. <laughs> no. Oh, what? Was it 37 then? <laughs> uh, 
we often try not to look at how long it is, but this had no information on the back other than, like, the basics. Yeah, there was something funny, we had to pause, and then we saw how long it was. We rewound it, and it <laughs> showed us how long it was, and I was shocked, because I was the only one who knew, hey, this was supposed to be 60 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of these ones where I go, where do we begin? Where do we begin? I think we should begin with when I put the DVD in the yes, DVD player. Yes. Well, I was peeing. But I went, I had to go pee, and Lauren and I were talking about, ah, wouldn't it, will this be a movie that even has a DVD menu, or will it just start? Because this is someone's burnt this onto like a cheap DVD they've bought in a, in a store. Yeah, and from the toilet, I could hear you say, like, oh, there's a menu and there's bonuses. There was yes. bonus features, There's Lauren. bonus features and deleted scenes. Not deleted scenes in the bonus feature. No. No, no. And not scene selection or subtitles. Just play bonus feature deleted, deleted scenes. scenes yeah. And might I say, we went above and beyond and watched all of them. Almost. Almost. <laughs> we, 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 we started all of them. <laughs> we started all of them, okay? <laughs> so, Okay. This is such a tough one because we've only covered narrative-based ones on the show, so there is no way of covering this chronologically because I think this we, is a uh, documentary. We could give like an overview of like the kind of structure of it because they. Can't... Uh, we can give uh, the structural overview. Yes, yeah. this is a uh, documentary about people who are white Australians yeah, from of Melbourne. varying age yeah. differences from. Was it 15 to like 30 to 40 year olds, right? They're and all young looking. And we believe they're all from the one school. Yeah. So teachers they are from and a school, students. Yeah. They're from a community of some sort. So this is a documentary about white Australian people going to Papua New Guinea to go to this village called Emo or Emo. 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 Yeah. There's varying debates within the group about <laughs> that because we were all like, oh, the first first straight off the bat, it opens with a guy on a boat saying, yeah, the village of Emo was devastated by this uh, storm or something, by this monsoon or earthquake or something rather. Yeah. And at that point, we were still thinking, like, is that like a plot? Uh, yeah, oh, it must I think it was Cyclone Garuba. Garuba, memory. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're like, oh, it's called Emo. And then several other people go, yeah, Emo, man, this village of Emo. And we don't know because we never hear the villagers say its name at any mm. point. Mm. But Despite how talkative they were, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the structure of this is, 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 is it's a typical documentary about, think, yeah. about people going to a place and discovering spirituality on a level, but not really. We'll get into that, I'm sure. But <laughs> the structure is it will cut to, you know, it will be them on their journey, the footage of them on the journey, saying things on the journey, and then footage that is obviously uh, in the future so they're speaking about mm. this retrospectively they're sitting somewhere in Papua New Guinea different mm. people like I would say about eight people probably are probably interviewed in total yeah, and they're I, just I... straight to camera talking about different experiences they've had along the way and different perspectives they've mm. ha they've gained and sites they've seen and people they've encountered yeah. and, and I, I, stuff I think like that. I think it's worth pointing out, not like a distant retrospective. It did feel like, oh... Oh, no, it was while they are on the trip. Yeah, no, no, but it, it wasn't like a post-trip retrospective. No. But it felt like, oh, they're still at the same location and there's things that are going to happen after it. Like, mm. oh, we came to this village, here's footage of us... Uh, playing with them, then it cuts to me interviewing, and that's clearly like, oh, like an hour later, maybe half an hour later, yeah. then it cuts back. It's not like, oh, end of the trip, oh, then there was that part where we did this. It was very much kind there of... There was some of that. There though. was some of it, but most of it was like in the moment-ish. So, Lauren and I went to university, we did a class on making documentary films, we had to watch a lot of them, make our own... So, I don't know about you, Lauren, but my brain was clicking into gear of memories of that class and watching how this failed making a documentary because straight off the bat, there's things that are just wrong. There's no introduction. It's just plonks that it's in, which is fine for some documentaries because eventually you're going to get to what the point is. Mm. I don't know if we ever got to what the point was until the last few minutes of the thing. And by that point, I was sitting there, like, kind of infuriated. Every now and then I'd heckle the screen going, What is this? Why are we here? Oh, 
Who are you? Who are you? Because another thing is there is no sub there's no there's no title cards or anything so there's the no, only when they're interviewing this person has a little font that comes up at the bottom the little text that comes up on the bottom saying this is dave or this is dan or this is gene no we are just supposed yeah. to the, know who these people are the only text i believe were the end credits and like the subtitles, subtitles of this one guy who was speaking at one point about one of the one of the locals yeah so my brain was clicking with all these things going this is wrong they're yeah. failing this they're failing this this guy's face isn't lit at all what's going on what's going on I don't know what went on, honestly. It doesn't feel <laughs> like they were planning to make a documentary. It looked like they were just, like, recording their trip and they just put it together. That's kind of what I was saying earlier. To make like, people go next year. Yeah. For th- this what? In the following year. <laughs> for what? Well, like yeah. I said, I really think this was just made for their little community, whatever that was, like a school, trip, well, Lauren, parish, whatever. Well, Lauren said it must be a Christian parish because... Yeah, because they kept saying ministry. Yeah, even saying this is a documentary is a false statement. This is a home video made for their friends. Yeah, like trip video, really. It's uh, it's basically um some guy called Dan, who yeah. we hear about a lot, and I don't know if we see him because, again... Well, he's we, in the cast, right? We never get anyone's names like oh this is dan this is gene so we actually just started calling every character dan and kevo and dino (laughs) because yeah oh were they australian right they were australian yeah as we are this trip yes it is physically demanding it's more about mental toughness and i think that that's what we're learning at the moment uh it was pretty easy to start and just as you go on, it gets harder and harder. The best way to describe this is we are archaeologists and we've just landed on the site and we have not been briefed on anything and we found this artifact. It's, it's a very <laughs> esoteric yeah. product. It's, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's for a community of people that know these people so they don't need titles. But even that, you say it's for a community of people and Lauren kind of gathered that they're Christian people. And it does have some Christian stuff in there, yeah, not so, very yeah. much. It's almost as much as Meteor Apocalypse. I don't know who this community is. Yeah, me neither. Is it for people who like Papua New Guinea? Well, for the whole- is it for the grandfathers who served in World War II exactly. and for the Japanese? Who is this for? Did- Lauren? Was it for you? It wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah. even, the op- Did- even your grandmother's... Gave it to me and went, oh, finally. Like, yeah. even, <laughs> it's not even for her. I didn't really get it till, like, very late in, but did you think any of the people in this film, the the Australians, were... Real? Were No, were not adults, like teenagers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I kind of thought they were, like, young adults, like 19 at least. Yeah. I, I thought one of them looked like a 17-year-old. So, yeah, but there are some... Like 16, 17. But there I are thought, some young no, adults look, that look a bit, you know, younger than Yeah, but are. this one, there was one specifically for me that I looked at and went, well, oh, that's a kid. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you, we... I think, for me, I picked up that they there were children there because there's a scene in which one of the guys who I called Kevo was talking to the camera and he just said like, yeah, here we are in this, uh, you know, this uh, little museum area. There's a bunch of guns here. There's some, um, you know, there's some <laughs> active grenades <laughs> that um, Una- Billy definitely isn't <laughs> touching right now. And it cuts out his pants over to the kid and the kid's like, oh no. And that felt like a teacher <laughs> talking to a student. Yeah. Oh, I just yeah. kind of interpret that as like, oh, a friend talking about a dumb friend or something. So this is uh, one of the many little village museums on the Kokoda track. We've just come in and uh, there's a range of Enfield and 303 style rifles here. A few machine guns and stuff like that. A few unexploded hand grenades over there that Jono is not touching. And um... <laughs> I really would have loved to see the scene of them accidentally pulling the pin and letting go of the handle. Oh, are you saying that wasn't the deleted scenes? <laughs> no, no. We'll oh. talk about the deleted scenes and bonus feature, which are two different things apparently. <laughs> not the same thing. <laughs> Because the documentary needs deleted scenes, yeah. Where do we go? Like, did we meet a bunch of characters? <laughs> I don't know. We weren't introduced, but we, we meet kind of a made. group of unintroduced people who decide to go to PNG Pop to PNG. do the Kokoda Trail 
and then go to the village of Emo or Emo. Emo, Emo. Emo. Emo, um, Emo, After Emo, Emo. it had been hit by Cyclone Garuba or Garuda. Yeah. Um, and back in 2007, I think, or 2008. Here's a question. Why are they going there? To check on the village? Why? Because what they for? because they helped rebuild it. I because think. Ryan, oh. they want to know who their neighbor is. <laughs> who is my neighbor? <laughs> okay, Lauren, that's what the back of the belt Lauren, wants us. I've got one question for you. <laughs> yes, I've got one question that is a multitude of questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When they get to Emo, do they build a library? No. <laughs> Are they going to? No, they give them books. No, no, but are they eventually going to build a library? Yes, eventually. <laughs> and will That's it be... the best part. <laughs> and will it be named after Kevo's dad, who's not on the trip? Yes. <laughs> as, the ever, as the film, as the video ever highlighted the idea that Kevo's dad has ever been to this village before. No. <laughs> Does it even highlight the fact that Kevo's dad is alive? <laughs> Or dead. I feel like he. They alluded to the fact he was. Was well, he like a veteran or something? No. Did they know? They said nothing about this guy's dad. Kevo <laughs> is just like they're gonna build a library and they're gonna name it after my dad because no, 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 I, no. I think that's what he really would have wanted. Maybe no. he wanted kids to have an education. But and and let's get this straight. Let's get this straight. This wasn't a talking to the camera thing. This was a speech in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we also told the principal of the school that um. We want them to build a library um, after my father's name, in my father's name. Um, so they're going to start building right away, set out a designated area, which is awesome. Um, I guess they want their kids to have the best education, and that's exactly what Dad would want. So, Lauren, they go, they, 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 they're in Papua New Guinea. Do, do they have a turbulent flight? Yes, they do. <laughs> Was it the worst they've ever had? Yes. Will it be the worst they ever will have because they're not going to have it again? Probably. No, no, definitely. The guy <laughs> said that verbatim. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, I've got to ask you a multitude of questions now. This is an interrogation. i got the spotlight <laughs> on your okay. face. All right. <sighs> Lauren. Hey, hang on. Is my face actually lit properly? No, this is by the people who made Welcome to Emo, so of course not. Natural lighting, maybe a torch. <laughs> Lauren, it's the camera light. <laughs> At night. At night. So, Lauren, the Kokoda Trail. Now, explain to people who aren't from the who are not Australian and from Papua New Guinea what what that is and why that's important. Okay, so the Kokoda Trail is a mem- memorial track in Papua New Guinea that a lot of Australians like pilgrim pilgrimage to. I think yeah. that's the right word. Um, to follow in the footsteps of um, veteran soldiers who who died who died, um, died in, in World War Two, mm-hmm. um, fighting the Japanese yeah. invasion. So the Kokoda Trail is a very important thing. Lots of people in Australia will have a holiday to go on the trail, which is quite a lot. It's a big trail. So, it's very important. You could make a whole video project about the importance of the Kokoda track and walking it. My question to you is, do they do that? No, it's only about six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but do they then talk about how important it was as if they did film it like that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And was it hard for them? Oh, yes. was it physically or mentally or both or what? Well, it was m- mentally. Oh, okay. oh, but but didn't it affect <laughs> one girl so much that she felt like she was going to vomit and all of her extremities were yeah. ow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be a bit of walking, like maybe that hard. And then we got there, did a little hill, little down bit, and literally the hardest bit of walking I've done in my life. And I have never been more close to vomiting and. I don't know, just every extremity was like, ow, this canes. It feels like a mad fever dream of Australians giving half-baked philosophies <laughs> on other cultures. 
this is the type of glorious documentary that shows a culture that is welcoming, that is accepting, but also completely apathetic to the people that are in this documentary that are saying to us, the audience, how happy these people are to see them. But when we see footage of the people, they look absolutely kind of like, this is our lives, we hope these people... They look apathetic. Bartek, mm -hmm. there were a lot of white Australian males. Yes. <laughs> None of them we got names for, but we did name them. We got some names, but not associated to Could you kind of explain our list of characters that we did name? So there's Kevo. Who was Kevo? I feel like Kevo was like a few people. No, Kevo was the main... Okay, so Kevo is... You were the one, Ke you're the one that kept bringing up Kevo. Kevo is the one I named, because I started the naming process. I jokingly said, oh, this guy's name's Kevo. Like and then he literally went on to say Dano to someone. Like He's like, my good friend Dano. And I'm like, oh, I was close. There's a Dano. That's kind of the joke that I was going with. We kept hearing the name Dan thrown around. Like Dan's like the greatest, most significant person. So I just said, like, oh, everyone's name is Dan. But that's the thing. We never heard Dan until after I said this guy's name's Kevo. Then we heard Dan, Dano, Danny. And they're all the same guy. But Kevo is what I would call the main character. Oh, the guy with like, slight facial hair. Kind slight of looks... facial. He looks like the exact kind of Australian male. He also had a piercing. In a his piercing ear. in his ear. He looked a little uncomfortable. Uncom he looked angry. He was a teacher. Yeah. He's the teacher. He reminded so. me of Pop Pop Guy from Deep Rescue. Oh, that's a good. <laughs> that's a good our comparison. previous episode on the film Deep Rescue. Check it out. Bing. This guy Kevo was Mister. I'm the leader. Yeah, it I felt, felt like it, yeah. He was the one who's like, my dad's going to get a library named after him because that's how important I am. But I at no the point did they highlight his role. We don't know what his role was. He could have just been some guy. Yeah. He, we don't know if he was a leader. Like, Lawrence says, I think he was a teacher guy. Well, I don't remember them ever really giving him that idea. I think he's just there talking about, like, my dad really likes education, hence he's getting a library and Papua New Guinea named after him. So there's Kefo. Now, then there was the miraculously loved Dano, or Dan, who's also the producer of this, and the top build cast member. Yeah. Did we see him? Did we know we saw him? Of course yes, we saw him, yes, Ryan. We just yes. don't know which one it was, because there were 16 of them. <laughs> so we never get him acknowledging that he's Dano? It's just a bunch of people talking about him. <laughs> and then we... we're weirdly cutting to a shot of a man that we don't know is Dan. But is it Dan? Is we don't know. And then, he, and then he says, we, it was a guessing game of, oh, is this Dano? Uh, we, the way to play this game was, guess... If this guy is Dano, is by just going, is he going to mention Dan? And if not, does that make him Dan? <laughs> does that make him Dan? you got to talk about one of your favourite bits, Bartek, in which Kevo is talking about a house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a bit of setup. They they do get to Emo Village or Emo Village. Yeah, like the and they, the last third I think is at Emo. And they and they all get given living quarters or spaces that are made by the the villagers. Yeah, like it's like round wooden bamboo-ish looking. And Cavo's telling the story in his brilliant articulate way. Yeah, and it, and it wasn't like a joke or anything. I don't think it didn't sound like it. He he just. He pointed at this cabin he was talking about. He's like, oh, yeah, this cabin here, it's, it's bigger than Dan's house back home. In Melbourne. <laughs> in Melbourne. <laughs> and Dan's staying in that one. Like, this is where Dan's staying. It's bigger than his house back in Melbourne. Yeah, it's, we're like, it's like, what? <laughs> think of, like, a single, like, story, maybe, like, three-room cabin. And it's like, that's not very big. No, it was quite small. Yeah. I think it's smaller than the place I'm living in right now. Well, maybe, now. maybe Dan's only living in a one-bedroom apartment in Melbourne. I don't know. I'll have to it's ask him. It's not really him. a house, that's, is it? That's a room. I'll have to ask him. He said house. Dan? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Dan sounds like. I can't even do an impression yeah. of him. Dan sounds like everyone. Yeah. Just every word's a different voice. Where do we go? Like, Well, Ryan, you mentioned, <gasps> you mentioned earlier that they're on a plane. They had to yes. land the plane. Yeah. Yes. And then they had to meet a bunch of, you know, people from that country. Where there was a little bit of racism mm. involved in which the guy said... He said, I'm not saying it. Come on, Whitey. He said all of us Whiteys were put on Whitey's the, on the left. Whitey's on the left, and the locals on the right. He didn't say anything racist about them, but that was the closest. Like, didn't he say the people from around here? Oh, the people from around here 
on the right, and we were waiting for a bit of racism because he said whiteies, and I was like, is he going to say blacks or something really inappropriate? But no, he actually kind of restrained himself. I think he noted in his brain while he was saying it mm. that he went, oh, I could probably make this not bad, and then proceeded to do so. Mm. And then they just walk for a while. There's a lot of philosophizing. Do we remember any of the philosophizing that they gave us in this movie? To be honest, it's it's all about the journey. Who's our neighbor, though? It's like every, it's like every it's like every generic um, like I was on a trip and it was inspirational kind of story. But like, yeah, you you at least got to see footage from that trip. Yeah, you actually got to experience the trip in yeah. those things. N- not not experience it for yourself, but like see people on it and then talk about it. No, but I was like, is this the type of documentary in which incredible things happen, but we don't get to see them, but we get to be told about them secondhand by the white people? You say incredible things, I think feelings are more about it. Okay, but is that what happens? Do we get to hear about how a guy talked to someone called Fuzzy Wuzzy, but we never got to see that? Yeah, that that was mentioned at some point. I wanted to see that scene. <laughs> him talking to someone called Fuzzy Wuzzy. Yeah. Well, they, we do get to see them meet a veteran. Oh, that was my favourite character, by the way. It's <laughs> <laughs> like character, and this is a real person. Cast. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Honestly, Lauren, help me. When you were watching this... I saw you. You were getting easily distracted. You were looking out at my kitchen in despair. Yes. Why? Was this just not narratively cohesive for you? No, it just took me back to the um, high school when you have to sit in assembly (laughs) and watch someone's, like, experience about going overseas. It was like one of those videos. And I was like, that's why my automatic response is to zone out. Was it a Christian high school? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it was a Catholic high school. So... After they walk the Kokoda Trail, which is, I think, the very beginning of the movie, pretty much. Like, they land. It begins with them, with a guy telling us in a boat about... Like we have to get to emo, emo. emo because of emo, this yeah. tragic... Uh, emo because of this tragic incident. Then smash cut to them in a plane, landing and being like, this is terrible, lefty, white people, righty, black people... Now we walk the Kokoda Trail, and for six minutes we talk about what a life-changing experience this was. And how it's and specifically how grand- mentally tiring. And our grandfathers were such brave people for fighting here, <laughs> and I feel like I owe them my life, which you do, because if they didn't procreate with your grandmother, you wouldn't be alive, because your parent would be alive. But either way, and they have this whole bit where they walk up to these marble pillars with words <laughs> like single called... words on them like courage or something. courage honor determination and you just get this one guy who sounds really unsure <laughs> even for an australian just being like ah uh, we were pretty tired so we didn't really know what those things were trying to say but i really felt the impact of what it was saying i'm like you don't even very know very australian yeah <laughs> And they kind of contemplate on that thing for a little while. They, they had like a they round circle, like moment of silence, <laughs> almost like mini liturgy kind of thing. Yeah, but I mean like in the interviews, you have several different interviews all going like of these people contemplating the importance of these pillars in the middle of the fucking jungle. As we head down the mountainside, we enter a little village called Isharava. It's an awesome place and we know that something massive has happened here, but we can't quite pin it down. Our emotions and our lack of energy are sort of starting to take over at this point. The massive marble columns that have been shipped in from Australia seem to scream it out at us. But the service that we have is somehow hollow because we know we can't really relive what has actually happened in this place. Our energy is almost gone, but we've still got six hours of hard slog ahead of us. And we press on. Then they march on from there to this tiny little village in which they meet one of the legendary veterans from the Papua New Guinea army that helped uh, the the Australians. He's hunched over, he's got a walking stick. He's so hunched over. He's so hunched over and his walking stick isn't a stick, but his rifle with the bayonet on it. That's what it was. Yeah, I miss, I forgot that. Yeah. Yeah. Because hmm. I guess he fought in World War One. And how do they, so, descri- <laughs> how do they describe his po- posture? I asked you, but do you want me to say it? <laughs> I can't. <It's> just... <laughs> so one of them's like, oh, yeah, there's this guy here, and he's uh, 
struggling or fighting to, <laughs> and, and we th- and we think he's gonna say, like, "Oh yeah, to stay upright to walk." It's like he's fighting to stay alive, <laughs> <laughs> to keep alive. To keep alive. <laughs> <laughs> what a mean thing to say. Like, well, fuck you, man. He's he's just trying to be upright. He's using it as a walking stick to get to his wheelchair. <laughs> Because yeah, they're like, we see this old man in a wheelchair, and we see him say that a old man hobbling over to his wheelchair, and he's, you know, he's trying to keep himself upright to stay, stay, stay alive. alive. Yeah. And we're like, what he's struggling the-? to stay alive. I think was Lauren looks so unhappy right now. She's just thinking about what a cruel thing to say, and she, and we know for a fact this guy doesn't speak much English, so he doesn't even know that he's getting insulted. So morning breaks, and we head out from our huts we head out from our tent we walk down a hill towards a man frail and old in a wheelchair struggling to even keep himself alive D- didn't they even have he a line of like the war fuck you didn't they even have a line of like he was talking to them like yeah we didn't really know what he was saying or something like yeah, that yeah like we didn't know what he was saying but we felt it that's a lot yeah, of that's, this that's, that's, that's a lot said. of this that's a lot <laughs> there's a girl who's later on like yeah you know there was this mum who held my hand, and I didn't understand a word she said, but then she tried to make me adopt one of her daughters, which was sad, but, you know, I can't get real sad about it because I don't know the context. <laughs> and it was so apathetic as well. But then that girl comes back later, and she's crying about something that's really, really emotional. Yeah, it was one of those cases where, like, they're crying in the shot before they cut. Lauren looks like she's about to cry thinking about it. She's just like, oh, this poor girl. It was emotional. So they meet this elder veteran and they're like, I didn't understand a fucking word he said. But moving on it. to the river. No, no. Moving on to this truck ride. This bus ride. Yeah, which they really enjoyed, I think. Lauren, did they enjoy that bus ride a lot? Fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yes. How? How could you tell that? They were climbing on the roof and doing the classic Aussie things going, Woo! <laughs> Woo! Woo! No, but was it before or after the truck that they found the remains of that uh, plane? Uh, I think it was actually after? I, I think it remember. was after the river. It was like next to it or something. They know? eventually find the remains of an American plane and then there's this like guy. was like Australia or something. There's this guy. No, they were attacking the Japanese. So, um, and they were, he was just like telling us his, he, what it is and his theory <laughs> but, of what happened. <laughs> yeah, he was but, interpreting what it was. This is also a large part of this video project is people telling us the thing theorizing about the thing and then saying it in a manner that sounds like they're not sure though so if they're wrong they have no accountability that's such an australian thing to do as well because yeah. that is something that a lot of people don't talk about with the australian culture is if we, a part because- of that is like people say oh we have that nasal thing where we talk a bit high and we sound like a bit like this at the end we do that on purpose it's just to the have no natural accountability. inflection the natural inflection we always ask questions get him more british as he says that though. yes yeah. it is um no no we i think we also use that to fuck with other people because it sounds like we're not sure what we're saying. Like, when we call you a prick, it sounds like we're not sure so that we have no accountability if you get offended. Mm. That's what this feels like in this documentary. They say something, but if they say it with no assuredness, if they're wrong, then they can't be blamed. If you find a copy of this, know that yes, <laughs> Australia's not full of crocodile dundies. It's full of... This. It's full of white middle class people who think that if they just put sunscreen on their nose, they'll be fine. That's it. Like these are the type of people who genuinely care about the game of cricket. It's awesome. I can't expect much more of a view than this. Love and life. Thirty-five people on one truck. Yeah. It's pretty funny. So they get out of there and they go to this river. And this was a great moment with us. They had these giant inflatable, um, what you call it? The, the tire gi- tubes. Tire tubes. Yeah. And Lauren just points at the screen. It's the most excited <laughs> she got throughout the whole, through all of it. I got there constantly say, Lauren, Lauren, look at the screen. And she's like, I'm listening. And I'm like, look at it. <laughs> this is the only time where she was like, oh my God, they've got those tire things. That would be so much fun. I was like, that looks like fun. That looks like fun. And then I explained to Bartek what Lauren was talking about because he was engrossed in, in the in the feature. Uh, and, and then Lauren then immediately, while I was talking about that, just said though, ah, but if it was me, I'd just walk to the river. 
<laughs> no, I, I thought Lauren was commenting on the one guy who's like, oh, he just walked or something. Yeah, but then she <laughs> said that would be me. It was me, I just walked through the river. So she was excited about something that looked like fun, but then immediately dismissed it as something she would not do, though. It's not practical to cross that river <laughs> on a time to, to, be fa- to be fair, be- between it showing the raft and you saying it looked like fun and the guy who just walked through it, it showed a shot of it, like, kind of not looking like fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, people were sitting in the raft and they were moving, but it wasn't, like, a ride or anything. You know why, too? It also has a voiceover of a guy saying, it was so good to wash our bodies off in the river. <laughs> well, those people would not because they're well, on super top. super dry, yeah. They're super dry. There were so many great lines of unsure dialogue <laughs> from these people. Bartek was being a teacher, when I say he was correcting them on their <laughs> on their vocabulary and the, the grammar, wi- the whiteies, not the locals. No, not the yeah. locals. Yeah. I mean, we were <laughs> correcting the spelling and spacing of the subtitles for them, though. Yeah, or the one time. <laughs> but but yeah. I love this. Think about this. I'm here in my lounge room with Lauren looking off in the kitchen, just disinterested, zoned out. I'm sitting there laughing, smiling. Eating chips, having a good time, and Bartek's also smiling. But every now and then, someone would say something just minor, like a old, a old, and or he, bought instead of brought. And he'd be like, you know, an old. And not only would you say it, you'd raise your hand in the air with your finger pointed like a teacher, <laughs> and then do a little kind of wave of the finger motion, like you're ticking a box, like <laughs> ding. And I'm like, what is this? It's for dramatic effect. Right? It's to indicate I'm not just talking to myself. <laughs> but, but, if, but you are, though. That's the best part. You're talking to Lauren and me. You're talking to yourself. Basically, like, it's an old actually. Ting. And I'm just sitting there like, this is my dream. This is my dream life, I guess. Like, here I am, sitting here watching Finding Emo. emo I want to say Emu. Finding Emo with Lauren drifting off like she's been lobotomized. And Bart's like, taking this as a serious I job will- as a a teacher being like, I wasn't taking it seriously. I was actually <laughs> referring back to when we did um, Jack Hunter because it happened there a few times. Too. I know, I know, yeah. but like I'm being dramatic. I'm just like, and here I am, just eating chips, watching both of you and the thing. Um, I got to chat to these um, two nice ladies and um, meet their kids, and it was really good to um, just not really understand them, but just to smile and hold hands with them. And eventually, they wanted me to adopt one of their kids, which was really sad. Um, Because I don't know the reason for that, but um, but it's just interesting trying to learn about the culture, and um, and yeah, just trying to understand these people. This had so many great moments of random interviews. We 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 go from the river back to a truck again. Yeah, and then I think we get to emo from there. I don't think there's anything in between that. I think they just arrive at emo. I think there was like a point where they were talking about how like oh one of us came here like two years ago. That was Dan. Yeah, Dan Dan's probably. always been there. And they were talking about how, like, oh, it was destroyed, but now we're going to see it again or something like that. So, Lauren, we've been building up to emo mm. for this whole movie. Not only have we been building up to it, in the interviews, at least for me, I don't know about you, did they make it sound ominous in their interviews? They did. They're they like, did. This place, emo, where there was this tragedy. Where are we gonna, when are we going to get there? What are we going to see? What? Are we even going to be welcomed? Because they've had tragedy and we've had nothing but, like... Westernized society. You know, will they accept us or will they attack us? Does all that build-up pay off? Does no. it pay off? No. No. If you were hoping for something optimistic, then I guess. Yes. <laughs> Lauren did. But I was looking for the twist. I was looking for a horror movie twist where it was. Uh, yeah, Lauren kept still turning. Hoping to... Lauren turned <laughs> to me a few times. was like, there's going to be a twist, right? Still <laughs> hoping it's a mockumentary. <laughs> still hoping it's a fake documentary of some sort. I also thought that. I was like, I said several times, oh man, if this guy got decapitated right now and he's sticking his head out of the bus or like... No, they never mention anything barbaric like decapitation or cannibalism in this film. (laughs) They do, (laughs) though. They do, though. (laughs) They do. They they have a, a white guy explaining how he thinks the Papua New Guinea's... Gideon's I believe just fucking cannibals, but then a guy gave him a hug and said, I love you, not I love to eat you. <laughs> I believe that was one of the times <laughs> when they were talking about how, like, you know, getting along, like, oh, they're so friendly to us, even though they don't have as much as us. He's like, yeah, yeah, these will just come up to you and say, I love you, and, like, you would expect they'd say something like, oh, I'd love to eat you, but they didn't. They just <laughs> wanted to hug. <laughs> when you're in a culture that its history is marked with 
saw like cannibalism and then uh, I went for a walk out after the ceremonies and uh, I had this guy come up and grab me, hug me and just say, I love you, as opposed to something like, I love to eat you, but <laughs> I love you and... Um... Malbato, we're boys, right? We're men. <laughs> Well, Lauren isn't. But oh, hold on. We're men, though. I had oh, to right say Bartek. Yeah. We're men. Spit and polish and men. That's the name show. Spit polishing men. Yeah. So, Bartek, we're men. Mm-hmm. And this film contained a lot of men. Yeah. Would you say it was a sausage fest of men? Uh, does sausage fest imply all male? A lot of males. Well, definitely most of them were male. There were only like two girls on the trip, right? There were only like two or three girls. Lauren. Yes. You're one of the girls on the here trip? on the oh, trip with yeah. us to <laughs> Finding Nemo. <laughs> Did you really, 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 really appreciate some female representation in your Finding Emo? There needed to be more to balance it out. Okay, but come on. Didn't they have the most heartfelt stories? They did, but just, just, there were still too many men. They were just very oh, blunt about on. their feelings. What, what did the girls have to say about their emotional trip and finding emotionals? Well, <laughs> one found a sister. <laughs> Not a neighbour. <laughs> Not a neighbour, a sister. And she's an auntie too. And and she now she's an auntie. And she's really sad. She's made all this family and now you have to, she has to leave. This was the person we were alluding to earlier who was crying <laughs> before it cut to her. I think the funniest thing about her crying, because it was funny, um, was they were interviewing someone else. Yeah. And you heard overlaid in the audio <laughs> the crying as that was like the audio transition to the next scene. But it was so weird seeing this guy talk about, like, yeah, you know, so what I've learned is Dan's got a big house in this place, and they don't want to eat me. They want to love me. And, <laughs> and I there's really... a chance of death. And there's a ch- <laughs> <laughs> That was a line of dialogue. There's always a chance of death. There's always a chance of death when you go overseas. And, like, you know, spiritualizing, and there's a little bit of God there stuff, but not yeah. too much. And, like, 90% of the way through that shot, yeah. And, you know, he's talking about that. And imagine him talking about, like, you know, my grandfather would have loved to be here. My dad's got a bookstore now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, like someone middle- crying behind him and then it cuts and there's like blank frame like blank shot it says darkness and then you see yeah. her head lift up because she's crying and she's huddled like the time over the time between the crying started and us seeing her face was a bit too long mm. Lauren if that was you would you be crying? no but okay, you just okay. became- Horror- <laughs> let me just say if it was 16 year old you because I think she was like seven, 16, 17 would you be crying about no. that? No. But Lauren, they held your hand and tried to make you adopt a child. Yeah, I still wouldn't cry. Well, no, I she was, was quite a, a tough t- teenager, to be honest. She was pretty apathetic about that bit, though. The, the, the adopting bit. She was like, you know, it's sad, but not really that sad because I don't understand the context of the culture. Yeah. Well, like, it, it shows, what? <laughs> well, yeah, that shows the duality of like your experiences of the trip. You can either just be like, oh, yeah, you know, that was a really good experience. Or you can be, I became an auntie out of nowhere. <laughs> because that was really out of nowhere to us. But there's only two girls and they're interchangeable because they basically have the same experiences. But there is one girl who's like, I got given a necklace. I can't believe that I got given this necklace. Was that a, was that also not a guy? I think there's another one where there's a guy. No, no, but that's the thing. There, no, no, this is the sequence. This is a sequence in it. Because I'd imagine this is not just the necklace. You can replace this with the necklace, the house. The hat. The hat. Oh, yeah. Here's a scene. Now, now, here's a sequence. Here's an interview with Kevo, Okay. Oh man, I got given this beautiful necklace by these people, and it's so nice because they're giving me what they have, and to me, what they have is nothing, but to them, it's everything. But overall, they're a non materialistic type of culture. Could you imagine if we were like that? Or giving away something that's so given significant s- to us? So us. Or irreplaceable? Irreplaceable. They do that every day, you know? They work their whole lives. Cut to an interview with, say, Dano, who we never met. But imagine, wow, I got given this necklace by this one person. And it was so emotional because they have nothing to us. But to them, that's everything. Cut to the girl. Wow, I got given this necklace by this one. Again and again and again. Back to back to back. Yeah, I can't... Since they were different people, saying it in a slightly different manner, 
it didn't feel as repetitive, but if you broke it down, that's what it was. And you do that for the hat, you do that for the river, you do that for all of it. All of this 37 minutes of documentary is people repeating the same thing again and again. Even the girls, as I'm like, tried, one tried to adopt, you know, make me adopt another one. The other one's like, I've got sisters now. It's like a lot of the same idea of, now I've got a family from this place. Was, that one was very definitive, though. I became an auntie. It's like, so you, you have a literal sister who had a child during this trip? Yeah, like, of course. These people are just so beautiful. They give us, like, so much. And they've got so little. I've got a new sister. <laughs> And I'm an auntie to a little boy called Freddie. And I hope to come back here one day to see them. Um, I just met so many new beautiful girls that I'll never forget them. Um, Leo and my new sisters. And uh, it was just so beautiful just to hang around with them. Uh, that's it. There's nothing else. It kind of just ends with them being like, we went to eat, we, here we are on Emo. And we're happy. A lot, of, a lot of, like, festive dancing and having good But they time. don't even really focus on that too much. Oh, they, but we see a lot of it, though. But it's, a lot of it's shot in the distance, though. It's not like, here we are in it. There were some close-ups. But not much. Not enough to say, ooh, I really felt like we were there, or anything like that. It's just kind of like, it's over there. See it over there? Now... Mm. Kevo's dad really wants library. <laughs> that was so bizarre because it sounded like he was bringing up out of nowhere. It was because he was bringing me up out of nowhere. <laughs> Did he request it? Like, my dad wants a library named after him or something? No, 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 no. He said, "Is my dad really loves education and this is what he would want. <laughs> Doesn't mean that this is what he wants. Like, he requested this. Yeah. It's more like... If you did that for your dad, you assume that that's what he would want. It, it it's not like your dad said, Son, when you go over to those Papua New Guineas, make sure you get me to build a library of myself. Yeah, and <laughs> none of that's happened. Like, it wasn't It wasn't the kind of thing where you would expect it to be framed as, Oh, the, the whiteies and the people from around here were having a chat beforehand. It's like, all right, and in the future we'll build a library and, um, you yeah, they decided we'll name it after this. It sounded like... They were requesting it then and there yeah. in a big speech where everyone was listening. Yeah, like the locals had no say. <laughs> Lauren, tell us about these locals. Were they really comfortable talking to these white people in front of a camera? There was really no, no talk at all. <laughs> Come on, tell us a bit <laughs> about the one guy's friend, Ben, who, <laughs> That's what I was just <laughs> who really, really wanted to be there. <laughs> that was great. So there's this guy, Ben, that I think one of the Dans knew. Yeah, he's one um, of the PNG people. And he'd, be, yeah. he'd been friends with him for six years. They cut to a shot of him. He's just sitting there, chilling, not saying anything to camera, not talking to his friends at all. <laughs> yeah. There were like two points where he was prompted and he like mumbled a few words. Yeah. yeah, and then he just went, wow, thanks, man, for saying so much. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> There's another bit where the guy's trying to explain what a handsaw is to one of the locals, and he just kind of waves his hand in the air in a soaring motion, and he goes, handsaw! And the guy just nods at him, going, yeah! And mimics him. <laughs> and they have this music playing like it's inspirational. <laughs> and that's it. That's Finding Emo. There's nothing else to talk about, really. I can think of other than just random, weird, colloquial things that these Aussies say and do that is just offensive. They think they're cannibals that will eat them. They think that these people have no worth in life, but that is their worth in life at the same time. They think that they're God's creatures in a way that makes them seem lesser to us. On a level. That's how I felt. The best bit of the movie, honestly... <laughs> the visual part. <laughs> the yeah. visual storytelling of these people. I was in such disbelief when I saw it the first time. I grabbed my remote and was like, I've got to rewind this. And Bart's like, you were just like rubbing your hands. Being like, yes, please, please. And you said, I approve. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all laughed at this, I think. Yeah. And it's a scene that, um... It was part of, like, a montage of, like, oh, here's some of the PNGs. Yeah, reacting and just living their lives. And what happened? Yeah, there were, there were two um two little boys, I believe they were, 
um, waving, waving, or, or just cl- looking at the camera. One of the waving. one, the one that was a little bit behind the other one, like waved, and in like waving to the right, hit one of them like right in the nose <laughs> eye area. And the kid looks so upset. You know, what <laughs> remind me of you remember that scene in Willy Wonka? I was literally thinking that yeah. in which um, the candy man <laughs> smacks that kid in the face <laughs> when open like the booth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Lauren, <laughs> that, come on, that I must loved it. that must have improved the it the did, movie. It for did. You. It Although did. that was, I told you to rewind it. I was like, rewind it, rewind this, rewind that was this. Li- and that was literally the part where we found out it was only thirty seven minutes long. <laughs> thirty seven minutes with one point two seconds of greatness. A kid being slapped in the face. If you were saying to yourselves, Ryan, does Finding Emo have a kid being slapped in the face? The answer is yes. Can we briefly talk about the the, the bonus feature? I mean, there's really not much to say, so briefly is everything, right? So, the bonus feature... Not the deleted scenes, Not the deleted bonus. scenes. The bonus feature was footage, raw footage, from their 2007 trip to emo oh yeah it was two years earlier yes yes and I said, so it's dan's trip to emo but we didn't see dan did we no because he he's behind, behind the, the camera, camera. <laughs> um and we saw all six minutes 40 of this yes no, no. We, we we fast forwarded because what is the footage well lauren you said, you said it's word. raw but <laughs> what is it showing Lauren? What part of the show? It's about three minutes of them trying to get onto the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from a boat. Yes, from a boat. On a very shallow and river. And then they like. go up to the village celebration. <sighs> yeah. And it's Dan trying to shy away from the camera. Where is he's greeted by the um, PNG women? Who? Who were who were topless? Of course they are. Um, in the traditional celebratory yeah. get, get And up. does the camera weirdly lower from what would be a cameraman's eye line yes, to the women's chest there. line? Yes. <laughs> now, Lauren, I was saying very loudly during that, is this guy on Bubsy Logie's camera to film the women's tits? Bartek was defending that. You were like, no, I think he's putting it down to be, you know, like talk to them, talk to them and yeah, interact yeah, with them. Yeah. Because he was really close to them. So I feel like if you had it in their face, that like. But then there were shots that yeah. were. Like, Lauren, what do you think? Do you think I'm that. Ba- he... I'm on Bartek's side with this one. I reckon he's It's, uh, it's very them. much a benefit of the doubt. Thing. Yeah. 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 We don't know Dan's intentions. We don't know Dan. We don't know anything about him. <laughs> we don't even know if it was him who filmed it. It just says Dan's trip. Doesn't mean he filmed that. Yeah. He could have been one of the titty ladies. We yeah. don't know who Dan is. Yeah, and to be fair, we only watched, like, all, just over half of it. <laughs> and was the music really good in that, Lauren? The music from the tribe? Oh, there was a loud... Doom, 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 for six minutes. Imagine that. Of course I fast-forwarded it. Yeah, it probably would have been better not hearing it through a camera, like, actually being there. Doom. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, Bartek, you love deleted scenes in in everything, I imagine. It's fascinating. It's fascinating to know what they cut out, and you have to piece together why they cut it out. Mm. This is one of those ones where even I go, why did they cut these out? I feel like because in in narratives, they are things that you decide, like, oh, they're not essential, like... We did a couple... We slowed down the rhythm, the pacing. Yeah, like when we did 13 going on 30 on Unappreciated Masterpieces, I talked about, oh, yeah, I watched a deleted scene where she went to the hospital and, like... The only really big thing in that was there was a gag of she had a tattoo on her breast and she checked it or something. And okay. And it was like, oh, okay, I can see why that was cut. It was just a gag. It was a little funny, but... Not ha-ha funny. But S- not so, essential. So, Bartek, what are the deleted scenes in Finding Emo? Yeah, and, and because this wasn't a narrative, the deleted scenes in it were basically just the cutaway one on... Ca- person to inter- uh, camera interviews. Yeah. Just, like, little, th- like, observations, opinions that they just didn't put in the final product. Can we talk about the final observation? Yeah. And can you I'll explain have to give my context, your... yeah. So, wh- while I was watching this film, I was obviously laughing at it throughout with Ryan and... I guess Lauren was kind of laughing at times. <laughs> um, <laughs> when she wasn't drooling and looking at the floor. <laughs> and, yeah, obviously we didn't have context and it was sort of generic like, inspirational, I was on a trip thing, but, like, at that time. And I have been on something pretty much like that at the end of 
year 12 in 2011, I wanted, I went on a trip to India where I helped renovate an orphanage. And a lot of the sentiments that some of the guys on that trip had were, you know, similar-ish. Yeah. Uh, I, I reckon the guys I went with could have expressed themselves better than people in this, in finding... Oh, really? Them. Probably, I reckon. Um, but a question, though. Did you demand that the orphanage be named after your dad? <laughs> Because he loves kids. No, That's what he would have wanted. No, it already had a name. It was like Boys Town or something. Boys Town. Yeah. Yeah. Boys Town. Oh, wait, no. It's one in Queensland. No, I don't know. Boy Town. Um, no, Boys Town. No, Boy Town. Um, yeah, so I, I got it. Um, when I went on that trip, I did have that idea of like, oh, it's probably going to be inspirational, but I don't know. I I'm, I'm, don't think it's going to affect me that much. I think I get it. And ultimately, I did get it. But it was a nice trip regardless. So when I was watching Finding Emo, Finding Emo, whatever... I, I did at least have, like, that... I believe that they did have an experience. They're just not expressing it very well. Yeah. But then the final deleted scene was a guy, you know, basically giving another generic, like, oh, it was inspirational kind of thing. But he, he ended it. And this was the last thing we saw because, you know, on the menu... The options left to right were play movie, bonus, deleted scenes. That's the order we watched yeah. it. So the last deleted scene was the last audio-visual thing we saw. He ended his big, ho- whole big inspirational, life-changing thing with, oh, but we're probably going to forget it all in a few months or something like that. And you got really annoyed about that. You're like, oh, fuck, like, really, man? But I, I was I, annoyed. I, I was just, I found it very funny. <laughs> Because you, yeah, but you what a way like, to end it. Yeah, but you did. But at the same time, it is a deleted scene. Like yeah. you can't fault it for that because this oh, is yeah. something that I they, understand why they went. Ah, no, uh, take this out. I guess it goes against everything. We were just thinking before how incredible it is for the villagers that we've been here. It's just a massive phenomenon. But um, it's just so sad that we're going to forget this in a couple of months. And that's finding emo. It's it's short and so mercifully short. And the the. F- Full feature, the bonus, and the deleted scenes don't even add up to 60 minutes, I don't think. No, no. In fact, I think that's 10 more, that's like 47 minutes if you watch everything. (laughs) Yeah. And you don't really want to watch the bonus, so. No, don't do that. So, Finding Emo. Now, the thing about this was, we didn't, we made a rough guess of what the year was. Um, At the end, the credits rolled and they had the, the, the footage still playing on the side of the credits. So yeah. we all saw what the actual year is that this film came out. Yeah. But, um, and, we, and we kind of spoiled it by saying, oh, two years earlier, 2007. So, so <laughs> this film came out in 2009, but yeah. we all made a guess uh, internally while watching it, maybe even before what it was. I was guessing 2007, 2008, because they mentioned PlayStation 3. Yeah. At some point. Yeah, someone mentioned like, oh, play- some of us, we have possessions like PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3. So that kind of indicated early in the lifespan of it. Exactly. Uh, what about you, Bartek? To be honest, I forgot to pick an exact year, but it would be pretty much the same as you, 2007, 2008. But Lauren was very brave. I did it before, based on the cover for <laughs> And what was your guess? 2005. That was very close to when Finding Nemo came out. Yes. Yeah, which Bartek like pointed out and was like, uh, Finding Nemo, though? I was like, that's 2004. I don't think they would have like a knockoff title for it that soon. Now, of course, this is nearing the end of the show, but we do have to talk about the recommendation of this. Would we ever recommend this to anyone to ever watch ever? No. Don't need to elaborate anymore, Lauren. Because <laughs> I'm also a dead no on that. <laughs> it was fun to watch for this because of three main reasons. The first being the most important uh, for me. Mm. When it turned on and it was a documentary, it was exciting because it was something new for us on this show. Yeah. The second was the lack of context. And the third was just quipping with Bartek. And Lauren while watching it. But actually having to sit down and watch it, it was a nightmare for me. Like we said earlier, like laughing and smiling. No, there were several moments in it in which I did put my hands on my face and go, oh, just, oh. Like one of the things that bugged me was the sound of, and this is not their fault, but the sound of crickets constantly in your ear. It was clearly not which a is production. Yeah. You know, which is fair enough. But when the movie ended, I was like, oh, no more crickets. 
Ah, but it was an infuriating thing to actually think. When I actually think about it, I was inf- annoyed by it, infuriated, and bored at the same time. I wouldn't say I loved it as much as, say, our previous episode, Robo Rex, but those are the three main reasons that I would say it worked for me, but I would not recommend it at all. I, this I, is... I'd, probably, I'd probably add in, like, oh, because we're Australian and we kind of might have known people like this, that sort of familiarity was like, ah, oh, these guys are Australian. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. What about you, Bartek? Pretty much the same thing, yeah. It's not something that I would say has much educational potential. Like, they did bring up a few things, like, oh, the Kokoda Trail, but it was all kind of vague. Like, th- those are all things that I'd heard of, but I didn't really know. So earlier when you asked Lauren to explain it, I was like, ah, yes, now I'll know. Uh, okay, um, you didn't do history in school? When I did it in year 11, we did American colonization for some reason in year uh, 11. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we did learn about World War II and stuff, but not the Australian side as much. Oh, okay. And also, I'm Polish, so anything that I would have learned from my family would be Polish-centered, not Australian. Oh, I understand that. Yeah. Um, look, I had a great time watching it with you guys. Wouldn't watch it on my own again. Not much educational or documentary intrigue potential. And I've been on a trip that, you know, has given personal experiences and hearing it from other people it's like yeah i'll take your word for it yeah n- not a recommended it's it's i remember when we did urutsuki doji i said that was too niche um, <laughs> this is n- the ultra niche it this i really think this was just for their community it's like people that know them this is their experience like oh i know these people went on the trip let's see some footage from it see them talking about it we don't need a titles because we know who they are yeah That's... Stan, his house is small <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in jokes are like oh there's billy Ak- no sorry there's kevo yeah there's billy playing with the grenade he's silly i, I know that he'd do that and there's him being embarrassed about it's so it. funny because he's dead now from playing with active <laughs> grenades <laughs> But everyone else survived. Yeah, it, it's it feels like it's for whatever community they're from. Um, I'm glad they had a good time, but it's it's not any sort of formal production. Uh, this has probably been the most amazing trip to MO we've ever had. We've never had students and you know people connect with people so well, and I don't think anyone really knows how to process it. So. We're going to be thinking about this for a long time to come. Bartek. Yes. The episode's ending. Mm-hmm. The listening people are still listening, hopefully, and they can listen to us on many platforms like Spotify, right? Yeah, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, iTunes. All it's centered around the Podbean, Stitcher, Stitcher apparently, probably, no, iHeartRadio. You know, you can give us an, a review on iTunes. Did you know that, Lauren? Yes, I have. I do know that. You could though. That's the thing. You could do it right now. But we can't even end the episode yet. Mm. The mystery box cannot be closed. What, are you Uh, saying we have like an ending gag in every episode? Yeah, a scenario. Mm. Guys, we are being kept in this room because outside there are a tribe of hungry cannibals from Papua New Guinea who want to eat us. Hypothetical cannibals that became real for some reason. We have to... We have to... And they specifically love to eat us. We have to to choose someone from this video project to help us defeat these enemies. Lauren, if you had to nominate someone, who would you nominate from the movie? Who would you advocate? Who would be your champion to help us win? I know there's many characters to choose from. The Thai Tubes. She's choosing Thai Tubes. That's actually pretty good. Bartek? I want uh, the guy who's who wants the library named after his dad. Kevo. Yes. Okay. Because he actually, he's the one that went out and asked for it. Wow, so you're going to say, Dano, I'm also a Kevo advocate, obviously. He was my favourite. Oh, Dan was pretty close. <laughs> my, sec- my second option would be the veteran. The veteran. <laughs> who's fighting to stay alive. <laughs> so, we're going to go with Kevo, Lauren. You've been outvoted here. Oh, that so, is quite okay. So, it's the three of us and Kevo. So, I'll go first as the tradition of fighting the hungry cannibals, because I do this often, guys. I'm going to use my option... Of diplomacy. Yeah. Maybe these cannibals will open up to reason. I'm going to hand them a scroll, you know, a scrolled up piece of paper that has like a treaty on it. I'm, 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 I'm unrolling it on their nice table made out of bones of humans. Scrolling it out, I'm kind of like 
pointing to it and they're not understanding and I'm having to like do physical actions <laughs> to describe what's on the piece of paper <laughs> and they're doing them back. That's my turn ended. We're just mimicking each other's <laughs> movements. <laughs> Bartek, what about you? Um, <laughs> I'm going to look around to see if there's anything that I could use. Uh, and I noticed that there is like a like carcass of this old plane. Oh, wow. From America, maybe? From America, yeah. It probably was trying to bomb something. And I'm going to go <laughs> yeah, up to it. put a bit more theory to it. <laughs> I'm going to go up to it. You don't have and I'm going to try to tell the cannibals from PNG um, why they should stay back from me because I have this thing here. And I'm going to explain it to them really slowly and, like, put it together. Yeah, but they're still mimicking my <laughs> movements while you're doing And that. I was like, you know, Ryan, both of our tactics are effective, but if we use them at the same time, it's too confusing and they're going to de-affect each other. Well, unfortunately... Two rights made a wrong somehow. Unfortunately, Lauren's got to come in now. What are you going to do to help us stop these cannibals from eating us. I'm going to grab one of those hand grenades <laughs> that Billy was playing with. <laughs> and then everyone looks at you and you get really embarrassed. And then Kevo's turn kicks in and he goes, now, we're all having a fun time, cannibals. Lauren's definitely not playing with that active grenade, are you, Lauren? And you're like, no, I'm not. Pulls the pin. <laughs> and then, and then Kevo's like, Look over there, guys! And they look over there, and you throw the grenade onto them while they're not looking, and we all run away. They explode. We high-five Kevo, and he says, Guys, make sure to put in the title description my dad's name. Mystery box. Finding Emo. In bracket, Kevo Senior. Oh, they'll buy it because it sounds like Finding Nemo and they'll think that's a parody. Exactly. Wow. So we did it. You guys have been fantastic, amazing, wonderful listening people as always. Lauren, a pleasure to have you on for the mystery box, even though you had to choose Finding Emo. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. You should be, Soz. Bartek, it was so great to join hands with you. Hold your hand. I didn't understand a word you said in the episode, but I kind of felt it. And now we're... Uh, yeah, now yeah, I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't speak Polish. And now I'm your auntie, and Lauren's my sister. Ryan, it was a great experience for me, but I'm probably going to forget it in a few months anyway. Who is my neighbor? Until next time, guys, remember to be kind to each other. You might forget it in a few months' <laughs> time. It, yeah. It's just so sad that we're going to forget this in a couple of months. <laughs>